Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody, and Happy New Year. As you probably know, we haven't put a video out since uh, our Charleston visit, which was a great visit, a great city, highly, highly recommended, as, uh, you know, if anybody hasn't been there. Uh, we went back after Charleston, back home, to uh, uh, visit with our kids and grandkids and spend the holidays, and it was great. And uh, now we're actually wintering in, in South Texas. And one of the things we wanted to do is show you and recap uh, some of the things that got us excited about uh, our RVing experience in, in 2021. Yeah, it was the Harvest Host program. And uh, honestly, that was probably what finally convinced me that, um, okay, I'm willing to give this a try because it's not an easy decision to make. But the Harvest Host program offers so much that um, I would highly recommend it to anybody. Yeah, we actually stayed at 12 Harvest Hosts and we visited two more that were uh, Harvest Hosts, but we actually didn't stay there, just went and, and, uh, and visited their, their facility. So stick around and we'll show you those, uh, those Harvest Host locations. So before we get started, we should probably explain a little bit what Harvest Host is. And so um, Harvest Host is a program that um, it, we, we pay, I think it's $100 a year, and uh, they contracted with wineries, um, breweries, farms, orchards, um, golf courses all over the United States and even some in Canada. And these places uh, allow uh, RVers to stay as long as you're self-contained, which we are. And um, you get a chance to kind of visit their area, visit their place, their their uh, their work locations, if you will, and, and some of these are great farms, like I said, breweries, distilleries, um, and all I ask you to do is patronize their uh, facility, which we did, and some and we just some of the food um, and uh, the produce that we've gotten were, were, were outstanding. The so blueberries, the apples, the wine, yeah, everything, the meat it was great, lamb, every, meat, everything. It goes so, on and on. So what we want to do is kind of walk you through chronologically <laughs> just where we stayed and just some of the highlights. I, I guess I'll start with the first one, <clears throat> and it was kind of interesting because we were traveling. We we had to get up into northwestern Illinois, and we were leaving from Branson. In Missouri and um, right along 44 <clears throat> there was um, um, a winery called Merrimack and uh, so we decided to stay there and that was the first night of two in a row of, uh, of wineries that we stayed at it's in st. James Missouri and um, you know it was a kind of interesting place we had a chance we ate some food there we drank some wine Well, the, the thing is being our first harvest host experience we really weren't sure what to expect yeah, and I would say that the location is convenient because it's right on 44, but the location is not spectacular like you see on the uh, on the, the, the program, if you will. Advertisement. Yeah, food was good, wine was good. We bought a bottle of wine, took it with, with us. It was called the Silvio Red. And uh, you know, we enjoyed our stay. And, and I think we you know, probably walked out of that saying, you know what, that was, that was good. And there's, there's probably some others. So um, as, we, uh, as we left the, the St. Louis area, we had to head up to just southwest of Peoria, um, and uh, we were heading up to, as we mentioned, northwest Illinois to, to stay at one of the uh, Corps of Engineer parks up there. But the next harvest host was a place called Kickapoo Creek Winery. And what was really interesting about that is as we left the St. Louis area, our GPS told us that um, we were gonna get there at about 3.40 or so, and they'd actually, they close at four o'clock. And so we really had to haul it to get up there. Um, <clears throat> as, I, as we got closer, I called and said, hey, it um, uh, looks like we're gonna get in there just, just before four o'clock. Are you guys okay with that? And they said, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll, there'll be people around, they'll take care of you. And um, we got there about, um, about five minutes to four and I put the truck in park and didn't even get set mm -hmm. up. And I just kind of ran inside and said, hey, you know, I'd love to buy a bottle of wine from you. And, um, and they said, well, you can do that now or you can do it later. And I said, I thought you closed at four o'clock. And they said, well, we do, uh, but we reopened at five o'clock and we're gonna have live music. We're gonna have the grill open. We'll have beer. We'll have, you know, Dude. local crap beer. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was awesome. Met some great people. And, and uh, Jenny Hahn. Yeah, yeah, yep. I think she follows us now as well. But uh, yeah, that was great. So Kickapoo Creek Winery. Now, the downside is we got some bad news from Jeannie. She texted or she messaged Pam recently yes, and had some bad it was news so about sad. it. It was a beautiful, beautiful location. I mean, they had 
they had cornfields. They had, obviously they had you know vineyards. Vineyards, uh, number one thing. Um, it was just a really pretty location, a really giant parking lot where they could accommodate several RVs at one time without even you know being close to each other. But unfortunately, she messaged me not too long ago and informed us that they were closing. So that was really sad. But Our hope is that they reopen because it was a beautiful location. So the next uh, Harvest Host location that we went to, now we didn't stay there, but we did visit and do some wine tasting, um, is a really cool place. We actually met some people that were staying there as Harvest Host's uh, guests and it's a winery in Hanover, Illinois, and it's called Forget About It Winery, which is a great, great, great term. It's run by a, a gentleman out of Chicago, an older Italian gentleman, and those of you that know, you know, Italian know, and New York Italian know that Forget About It is kind of a slang, but a great place, and we would have loved to stay there. I would say that the road in is a little bit rough, but the view... It's like a roller coaster. Yeah, it was a roller coaster, mostly gravel, um, yeah, but the view cool. that you would get there, having stayed there, was was fat, was magnificent. Um, and, uh, and we got some wine. You liked it. We, what? Met, we met a lot of um, uh, couples there and hung out and drank and you know, drank wine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they it was had a lot of fun. They had uh, two wines. Uh, we bought one. Co well, actually, more than two wines. But but one of the ones they recommended was something called the Bada Bing. And then, uh, of course, I had to say, well, where's the Bada Boom? And they said, well, they're out of the Bada Boom, but they actually would have that. So forget about it, winery. It was great. I would highly recommend it and as a place to stay. The next Harvest Host that we visited was Five Oaks Greenhouse and Farm. And um, it was obviously a perfect place for me because I'm, you know, a plant person. And, and the um, No ferns, by the way. <laughs> no fun. Possibility. No, so uh, Rich and, and Becky were amazing host and hostess. Uh, they they're actually starting this farm, um, built their own greenhouses, and uh, from what I understand, their their business has just really boomed. The, the grounds are beautiful. They've got about 10 acres of sunflowers were in full bloom. And uh, they, they, uh, they met us and they, they toured with us. Uh, they, they showed us the property. Um, they've got two of the biggest Great Danes I have ever seen. In fact, one of them is a leaner if you know what a leaner is, and so uh, <laughs> he basically went everywhere with us and leaned on us, and if you ever had a you know 200 pound Great Dane lean on you, it takes some muscles to lean back. But It was cool to go because they, they toured the farm and showed us everything, um, and then they took us into their barn, which they use as an event center, and uh, we just hung out, had some beers, great conversation, and it was, it was great. Yeah, and the funny part is they actually gave us some uh, some farm fresh eggs and some tomatoes the next morning because we asked them what can we buy from you and they said well nothing's really ready to go their their greenhouse uh, did, we we're out of season for mums and so um, they uh, they gave us that and I said you this is not the way the program works we're supposed to buy something from you but anyway we were the, actually their first um, their first guests and so uh, Five Oaks Farm and Greenhouse in Harvard Illinois you know out outstanding guests thanks Rich and Becky. Outstanding guest. <laughs> yeah. So the next Harvest Host that we stayed at, <clears throat> we were traveling from Madison, Wisconsin, up to the Green Bay area, and we stayed at a place called M&T Orchards in Gibbsville. It's near Sheboygan Falls, actually very close to, to Lake Michigan. <clears throat> and the downside was um, we were traveling, and it was raining all day, just all day rain, downpour. Right. Uh, Right. Pouring down rain. And when we got there, so the first, uh, first piece is that on their website they advertise that uh, RVs 29 feet and below. And I told Tony, that uh, Tony and Shelly, who were the owners, uh, that we were 35 foot fifth wheel. And he said, don't worry about it. I've had uh, that size RVs in before. And um, so we got there. And as we started to back in, it was pretty tight. Um, I saw Pam on one side in a raincoat. And poor thing, her hair was kind of getting wet anyway. She didn't have her hood up. I don't up. think I had a raincoat on, actually. Well, you were, you were out there doing what you needed to do. And I look on the other mirror, and who's out there as well? He didn't need to be there, but Tony, one of the owners, was helping us back in. So we backed in and uh, got situated for the night. Next morning, we got up, and it was fine. And we went and picked some apples and in the apple orchard. And it was a orchard. beautiful orchard. It's a beautiful day. Very close to Lake Michigan. We got a chance to go to Lake Michigan as the weather cleared that night. And then Tony uh, suggested the next morning that we go visit uh, yeah, the, the village of Kohler. We had some video on that. And uh, also Whistling Straits Golf Course. And I probably wouldn't have known that had we not had that discussion. So, Tony and Shelley in uh, M&T Orchards in Gibbsville, uh, Michigan, uh, I'm sorry, Gibbsville, Wisconsin, 
uh, just, just salt of the earth people. So after we left um, the Green Bay area, we were heading up to the Upper Peninsula. And we were really excited about that because neither Pam and I had ever been there before. <clears throat> and we decided to stay at a, uh, uh, a harvest host in Bark River, Michigan. It's called Northern Sun Winery. And I don't know about you, I don't really associate great wine in Michigan together, but we were very pleasantly surprised the wine was really good. Um, as we were traveling up, we were kind of going along the shores of Lake Michigan, and um, uh, we, we had to make a turn off on this very rural road. We were probably on that road for about 15 miles it, or it so. It felt like we were literally in the middle of nowhere. And, and you start to question your directions at that point. But um, we knew we were getting close. GPS had us going there, and we were about a mile away or so, and we make this left-hand turn. Um, on the road to go to the Northern Sun Winery, and all of a sudden, there's just people everywhere. People everywhere. Cars, Ro people. It was crazy. Road was closed, and I'm like, where did this come from? So apparently, there's an off-road racetrack up there uh, called the Bark River uh, Raceway, and they were having a national race uh, that weekend. It was called the Bar uh, Bark River Rumble, uh, uh, UP. And um, the, the cars are like modified razors, uh, but just, you know, loud, obnoxious and, and uh, off-road. Um, but we had to get past this and the road was actually closed. And here we are. And, we, and the thing is, is we, we came upon the roadblock and we just needed to be like right on the other side of where all of this was happening. And there's like no, a quarter of a mile from right, there. And there's no way we were backing up. So we had to negotiate with people there. And they, they let us through before the races. That we were actually in between some races. They let us get through and then we got to, got to the winery. And uh, yeah, very pleasantly surprised about the wine. And we met a, oh, uh, we we met, met a fellow nomad. We met nomad. Joanna. And uh, we had fabulous conversation with her. It was a beautiful day, and, and we sat out there and talked for hours and uh, learned all about her. And she was actually on a uh, solo trip from Oregon um, all the way, I think she went all the way to Maine and back again by herself um, in a teardrop uh, camper. And, and it was quite amazing to listen to her stories. And, and uh, I was just, I was just, totally amazed by and we're not buying a teardrop tra tra trailer by the way so <laughs> anyway so that's a northern sun winery and uh great you know, just great beautiful place and uh outside of the race um uh, very very peaceful place to be okay. <laughs> outside of the race yeah mm -hmm. it, it if you remember the video from that area it, it was kind of funny because uh we're out in the middle of what felt like nowhere and we expected it to be quiet, and all you could hear was the rumbling of these cars. As we pulled in, and we'll show you on some of the video, there's like some international off-road racing going on. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear that in the background. Yeah, you can pretty much hear it. So as we left the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, we had a great, great time there, of course. And um, uh, we had to get to Elkhart, Indiana for the Alliance Rally. And we had uh, one more stop to make after we left uh, Great Bear Dunes. And um, this one was especially fascinating. And so um, it was called Bumbleberry Acres, and it was in South Haven, uh, Michigan. And uh, for those of you that not been there before, that's a mecca for blueberries that time of year and, and supply uh, a lot of the country's blueberries. I forget the exact number, but it was a high percentage of the country's blueberries in, in that time of year. Um, and so we, we, uh, we, we showed up and it was the only harvest host that actually had a sign waiting for us. And again, back to sort of the, the, the things about this, um, about this program is you're not just staying in the parking lot, you're not staying in an RV spot. So Beth and her husband uh, had a spot picked out for us and there were another harvest host guest there that night. And we basically overlooked just acres and acres and acres of blueberry orchards and it was outstanding. And uh, we had a chance even that evening as the sun was setting to go out and pick a little. It was, it was great. She's like, just go out and grab it and taste them and compare. And, and it, was, it was quite fascinating. But you know what's probably really cool about that one, and uh, you saw in some of the uh, magnificent Michigan video that we did, is um, Beth came to us actually probably late that day and said, "Hey, look, if you guys aren't leaving the next day, and we only had about a two-hour drive to our to our next location to Elkhart from there, and uh, so we really weren't in any kind of a rush to, to to move on." And she said, "I will I'll show you a tour of the whole place." And uh, we thought, "Well, okay, that's great. You know, you got your blueberry orchard here, and you you have your store there." Well, they took us to where they produce and pack uh, uh, the they don't produce. not produce. They, well, where they take the, it's the the processing the processing plant plant. Yeah, where they where they uh, separate and package their blueberries. 
and just just fascinating to see that so anyway so beth who affectionately calls herself the farmer's wife thank you so much for your hospitality and your blueberry pie was amazing and the blueberries were great and uh, we had I, blew, I think my teeth are still purple from the blueberries that we had uh, at the location so they, they, she was just the most fantastic person I mean it, I think she was from North, North Carolina, Carolina yeah. Originally, yeah. and uh, here we were up in in Wisconsin oh no Michigan Mich <laughs> here we are up in Mi Michigan and um, her southern hospitality was showing for yeah, sure exactly so, so the next one on the list is uh, not a uh, location that we stayed at. Uh, we had traveled across uh, upstate New York, uh, spent time in um, uh, Niagara Falls, as you saw in the videos. And then we were in the Finger Lakes, and um, while we stayed at a RV park in the Finger Lakes, one of the places that, that would have been out outstanding to stay at as a harvest host was a winery called Chateau Lafayette Renault, and I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, and we looked at that, and it just looked uh, fascinating as, as a harvest host. Again, we didn't stay there. We went and tasted some wine, had some food, and uh, just really enjoyed the views of, I forget if that's Lake Seneca that it overlooked, and just the views are outstanding. And if you have had stated as a harvest host. I mean, I don't know how the view could get any better uh, than that particular location. So yeah, Chateau positioned up on a hill overlooking the lake. It, it was beautiful. Yeah, it really, really was. Chateau Lafayette Renault. The next location that we stayed at um, was, uh, as we left the Finger Lakes, we're heading to Lake George, and it was um, in a town called Ilion, New York, and it was Gastrum Farms, and uh, it was a grass-fed beef farm, and uh, as <clears throat> I've said to a number of people about the Harvest Host program, some of the hosts make you work for it to actually get to the location, and this was, this was certainly one of those. While not on a, a bad dirt gravel road, the hills to get into it were just something to navigate. But um, what was really different about this particular location was they actually offered hookups. Now, for a, for a slight charge, um, but it was great because it was, while well, it was a harvest host and while you can buy, we did buy some grass-fed beef. Some uh, fantastic meat. Oh yeah, it was, it was outstanding. Um, the, uh, they, had, they had hookups, and uh, not full hookups, but they had power and they had water, and that was enough, and it was a, it was a small charge to do that. I think there were probably um, six or so guests mm -hmm. that night, and we got a chance to meet another couple, another Alliance RV couple, um, Anthony and, uh, and Amy Brom, who had just started their sort of nomadic lifestyle. They sold their house. He's a retired firefighter. And, and it was interesting because they had literally just, like, just she had just retired from her job and they had just headed out so yeah that and, was fun. and you'll see some of that as well so gastrum farms in Illinois, New York. after we left maine we uh we started heading back south uh down the coast and we were going to go visit uh, my family in the new york new jersey area um, but <clears throat> between maine and new york and new jersey we ha we did have to make a stop and we found a harvest host in uh, glassenberry connecticut it was called roses berry farm now they were not open uh, when we got there, but they did allow us to stay there, and uh, the the view is was was amazing. It was uh, you know just I forget how many acres, but they had apple orchards, and while they call themselves berry farm, I mean I think probably the most prominent produce I saw uh, was were, were well apples. certainly the the biggest space uh, you know consumer were the apple orchards. Well, they had apples and. Pears. Yeah, I mean, just a bunch of stuff like that. But, but so don't don't if you if you consider staying there, if you like apples in that time of year, um, just outstanding apples. So huge apples. Yeah, well, apple and just way. varieties, just an enormous amount of varieties. So um, and it was cool because we were the only ones there that night, and it was just you know the night under the stars was was amazing. But uh, so the next morning we we were getting ready to leave, and we contacted them and just let them know we were getting ready to leave and what we would like to you know buy something so they came and actually opened up the store for us and uh, they you know grabbed a basket and said go pick some apples and i don't know how many pounds of apples that we grabbed but we were eating apples for for oh, days I, and i wish i had some of those apples uh, right they were, yeah just again <laughs> i think we hit that at the right time of year and, i mean uh, literally some of the apples were the size of what you might expect grapefruits to be yeah just you know very, very good and we did buy some of their jams as well so roses berry farm in glassenberry connecticut as we traveled from New Jersey to my brother and sister-in-law's house in North Carolina, we needed a place to stay and stayed at Rumbleway Farms in Conowingo, Maryland. Um, Tough one to say. Yeah, say that 10 that's times a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
It was a uh, it was quite the experience. They they put us in a, a fantastic spot. Um, well, hang on a second before we start. it was so it was a grass fed beef farm, and uh, and so that was one of the attractions because it was starting to hard to get to produce, but it was a grass fed beef farm. So, tell them tell them where they put well, us. Well, not only did they grow <laughs> their own uh, uh, cows or whatever, they also grew turkeys, and this would have been in October, and uh, uh, put us. Right beside their their uh, turkey cage. No, it wasn't a cage. Pen. Yeah, the enclosure where they were uh, keeping their their turkeys. Where the turkeys lived. Yeah. The turkey houses. Anyway, there must have been three hundred turkeys, and um, it was quite the experience. It, it was kind of fun watching them because I'd never been around turkeys before, and quite honestly, I didn't realize that uh, domesticated turkeys were white. I just thought they were all brown. But anyway, um, uh, it was great. The downside was flies. if you stay near turkeys, you're going to have flies. Flies. We, we had, had lots and lots of flies. Lots of flies. But we dealt with it. You know, we, we travel with uh, the fly strips. But the, but the food was fantastic. The, the meat that we got, the... Um, it was fantastic. Yeah, they, they don't they don't serve food there, but the the grass fed beef they have and lamb uh, were amazing. And so we bought some fillets. And we treated uh, uh, her brother Bobby and sister in law Karen to some fillets and a, and a, tea, uh, a porterhouse, uh, some ground beef. But then um, we we bought some skirt steak, which we used to make fajitas, and they were the absolute best. I mean that f skirt steak was was amazing. The texture and the richness and the depth. So uh, yeah, Rum Rumbleway Farms in Conowingo, Maryland. So as we were traveling down to Fayetteville, North Carolina, where uh, Pam's brother uh, Bobby and, and sister-in-law Karen live, um, we had to go around D.C. and uh, after paying about four thousand dollars in tolls, <laughs> <coughs> leaving the well, the we New were in the New York area, you know. <sighs> it's a uh, you know great place to visit, but but uh, didn't want to pay the tolls there. But anyway, <laughs> so we headed down to um, uh, just outside of Richmond, Virginia, and again another location where you're not necessarily known for their wine. Uh, in fact, actually, I guess they say Charlottesville, up in the uh, more kind of in the western part of the state, is. Um, but we stayed at a place called Spring Run uh, Vineyards. And um, uh, there was another Harvest Host guest there that night, and uh, they opened up their their uh, wine room for us. And they were just getting started. They didn't have a, they only have several acres, and they did bring some other grapes in. But you can just tell the passion they had for what they do as a business, and uh, how they're going to grow their business, and the fact that they are unique in that area. Uh, I think there's only one other uh, winery uh, in that Richmond area, and. Uh, you know, they had some very interesting flavored wines, but just some of the whites were just, were again, you know, we were very pleasantly surprised in a place that's not known for its grapes. And, and the conversation was really fun. We had a great time just hanging out with Wendy and shared her story, how they got started, and, and uh, we wish them the best. Yeah, yeah, just a, just a great, just a great place. So as we uh, as we left Charleston, started heading west back toward Dallas, we needed another uh, harvest host to stay at. In fact, we were going to stay at two in a row. Uh, this one was just west. When I say west, it was not just, but it was west of Atlanta in a town called Rutledge, um, Georgia. And it was right off of I-20, probably three or four miles. Very, very convenient. Beautiful grounds. CJ Orchards. And so as we got there, uh, Robert and his dad run the farm. Um, and uh, Robert came and greeted us. And what we didn't know was Robert actually was the county sheriff as well. So we had a great, a great conversation with him. And uh, um, they didn't have much to sell at the time. A peach orchard. And we were out of season. But they did, as you see in the video, um, put us just overlooking their peach orchards, and I can just imagine, and, and, and yeah, I can imagine <laughs> a peach season. We, she said we bought salsa, which we did. Peach salsa, it's really good. Yeah, and but if you were there during peach season, I can just imagine the smells and just how beautiful that that, that was. But CJ Orchards and had a chance to play with Mika on the grounds, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Beautiful location, uh, again, very very convenient. Well, last but not least, um, as we continue to make our way west, uh, we did a Harvest Host stay in, uh, in Alabama. And this one is uh, literally three miles from Talladega Speedway. So that was really kind of cool. And I'd, I'd never seen that before. But it's called HD Farms. And they're, a, as he called, a grass-finished 
lamb farm and so we got a chance to to go up and uh and hang and spend some time with the lambs and i love lamb pam's not so much a lamb eater um but we uh we got a chance to see how they raise their lambs and and look at the grounds and uh, henry and paula did offer um for a donation there was no fee but a small donation they would give you electric and uh and actually a sewer um, water yeah, we sewer, had full hookup. yeah so we really had a full hookup and it was you know nominal don donation whatever you feel like given um but we bought a lot of lamb and the lamb was outstanding lamb chops and ground ground lamb and um i still actually have a lamb shank that i still have not made and i'm saving it for a special occasion and, and I, yes exactly i need that I but need it was to, great because uh they they came in and and we hung out and uh had some great conversation um so what's interesting about henry and paula is that they're kind of like pam and i in inverse and so henry is from alabama and uh, Paula actually is from upstate New York, and as you know, Pam is from Mississippi, and I'm from New York City originally. So I guess they say opposites attract, and 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 uh, and they certainly do. So Henry and Paula, great place. I will let you know. Um, I'll message you when I eat the lamb shank, and let you know how I cooked it. And actually, they do give some recipes as well on their website. But uh, great people, um, and again, just a great stay. So well, we hope that you enjoyed some of those locations. We just had an, you know, an awesome time. So anybody that's thinking about, you know, getting in, into the uh, RV sort of lifestyle and, and traveling around the country, uh, we would highly recommend that you uh, you look at the Harvest Host uh, program. In fact, as of uh, 2021, they purchased Boondockers Welcome, which adds a whole nother spectrum uh, into that as well. So uh, we would be curious about your comments, about anybody that's used Boondockers Welcome. About any of your experiences. We'd, yeah. We'd love to hear about them. Yeah, well, you thought about it, and because uh, we, we'd like to potentially add that to our program. And anybody that stayed in other Harvest Host locations that wanted to add in the comments would be curious about where you stayed as well because we're, we're certainly going to be looking at this yeah, again next year we've we only scratched the surface there's so many more we want to visit and as we travel uh to the west um maybe somebody can share any experiences for anything in the western area that we might want to go visit absolutely so uh, anyway thanks for watching and uh like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and we look forward to seeing you on our next video